All right, Flames fans, here we are. Year four of our franchise mode series, and this is the third and final year of John Ram Jackson's entry-level contract, which means we have an opportunity here to go for it. And as you could probably see by the timestamp here of the video, this is going to be the longest video of our series so far. Now, I've had some comments saying, gee, get some longer videos, you know, make, make some longer videos with these because we want to see... You know, like a 20, 30 minute kind of video for franchise mode. And, and the thing is, I would love to, but sometimes there's not that much to do within a particular year. Because especially at the start of a rebuild, you kind of just go with the flow and you have to let things ride out. So that's why we had shorter videos for the first three parts. Now, though, it is time. And as, as we get to the draft, the Anaheim Ducks in our division... A pretty pretty decent rivals here to the Calgary Flames. They draft a franchise player. When I saw that, I said, oof baboof. If we're going to go for the Stanley Cup, we probably want to start a little bit of a giddy-up on that because the Ducks are going to make it more difficult for us to do that once this guy develops. He's already an 82 overall. He'll probably be an 85, 86 by the end of the season. So we got to giddy-up, right? While Ram Singh is in the 90s and this kid is not. If we want to get by the Pacific Division with any type of ease, it's now. It's now or never. So we're going to make a lot of moves today. Our draft went okay. The first three picks, you know, we had a top six forward. We had a top nine forward, which I was not too, too happy with. But, I mean, it is what it is. You're not always going to hit. And then we had a top six defenseman. First three picks of the draft, quality players, NHL players. You know, they're going to make the show if they develop properly so we were pretty happy with that and then in the later rounds i just kind of took some swings at some guys we went with some exotic ass places to draft guys out of but you know what it worked out we got a couple of low elites so we just might get some really good players out of it so the draft was pretty good now it is on to the re-sign phase but first comes the coaches a few coaches expired quite frankly my entire nhl staff expired and honestly looking at our head coach yeah he has good chemistry actually with a lot of a lot of our top players but i figured man he's just, he's in the b's most of the time and we've kind of been kind of been running into a wall whenever we get to the third round i know it's a little bit crazy like if you consistently make the third round you're doing something right as an organization but i figured if we keep trying the same thing over and over again, it might not work. So we are going to fire our coach. Really, we didn't really fire him. We released him at the end of his contract because that's his contract expired. So he didn't get fired. He would just was not renewed for the Flames. Here comes the re-sign phase. We lost a couple of quality players because they didn't want to re-sign. And you know my policy, unless I really, 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 really like you, if you don't want to re-sign, you're gonzo. Gonzo. But... We're going to get a couple of quality depth pieces and just a couple of young guys under contract also. That's just kind of what I do. Wayne Simmons, I figured, man, let's let's see if we can get him back, okay? Because he's been a, a solid a bottom six guy for us, and I, I signed him to two years. And the reason for that is his salary was under what you can bury at the AHL level. So if he becomes to the point where we can't really use him in the NHL, then at that point, we can just send him down to the AHL. It's not going to hurt our cap. So that's why I felt comfortable giving him the two years. I have a, I have a sneaky feeling he's not going to play year two on the NHL team. But it is what it is. Everybody else just kind of went smoothly. We didn't really have uh, much else. And the goaltenders, goaltender screen was a little tricky. Because we had to release somebody so that Sogard could get up there. Right? We're about to get to the goalie screen here. We had to release somebody because I wanted Sogard to have time, right? I wanted him to have starts, and Deming honestly wasn't playing that well for us in the last last season. I think he gave us a point eight nine nine, not good enough. So when I looked at his player card and I saw that, I said, "Yeah, that's that's not good enough. We're gonna release Louis Deming. We still have Flower for now, but he is uh, falling off a cliff, is how I would put it." As far as his abilities go, and he's still being paid a decent amount of money. Now, look at Sogard's contract. Sogard actually was pretty interesting to me because he's a starter potential goalie. And you see, he doesn't want a lot of money because he wants a bridge deal. So I said, you know what? At worst, this man is going to be a backup. Like, if it goes completely sideways, he's going to be a backup. And we can sign this man for about a million dollars for the next five years. 
So if he becomes a starter, that's going to give us a lot of cap flexibility as we barely are going to pay our goalies anything. You know, if you can get a starter for a million dollars, that's crazy. That's a really, really good contract. So we went ahead and did that. And obviously, we have some goalie prospects. We're going to have to let go of someone so that they don't take starts away from our goalie prospects. Obviously, with our mini elite in there, they're going to struggle a little bit, right? They're low overall ratings for the AHL, so they're going to have a little bit of a tough time, but I feel like they're going to grow. Our medium elite's probably going to be in the the lower mid-70s by the time the season ends, so I, I, think, I think it's going to be fine. And of course, everybody says, yes, daddy, and they come back to the Calgary Flames the first day of the re-sign phase, and we pretty much brought back everybody that we wanted. Nobody's given us a hard time. I was a little surprised at Sogard signing for so long for so little, and I was very happy about that. Some scouts expired, doesn't really matter. You're not here to see no damn scout, you know? You're not here to see... That's boring. That's boring. So I went ahead and replaced those off of camera. You don't need to see any of that. But now we need a head coach, and I wanted to have somebody with, hopefully perfect chemistry with our boy now the the sad thing about this coach right here is yes he is very good with ram Jackson, but he is not good at all with anafin and anafin is a big part of our team man he's gonna be an elite defenseman we do have to re-sign him after this year but i'll do my best so now i'm trying to get a coach that really is matched up well with both ram Jackson and hannafin it's a little bit difficult to find, and at this point, there was some, but they were not great coaches, so we went back up the chain, and we're just trying to find, you know, a happy medium between Hannafin and Ram Jagsey. There, there's a few guys that fit the bill, I'm trying to find the, the best one I can find, and we landed on this man right here, Mr. Goulet, yes, if I, if I could stop, <laughs> if I could stop looking at the rest of these, look, he's not fitting with Hannafin, we don't want that. We do not want that at all. So we're going to go with Mr. Goulet. There you go. I knew that was the man. And we are going to offer him a contract here for a couple of years to be our head coach. Philip Goulet. That sounds like a Flames coach, right? It sounds like a Habs coach, to be honest. But look at our look at his attributes. Very good. Good teacher. You know, he's got, he's got no weaknesses, to be honest. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to offer him a big-time money, money deal. Please come coach the Calgary Flames. I almost said Atlanta Flames. Can you imagine if I said Atlanta Flames, like, like just regularly, like it wasn't even a thing? Man, that's a throwback. I miss the Thrashers, man. I'm, I really do miss the Thrashers. But here we go with the free agency. We have about $21 million of cap space. And after taking a quick look at our roster, seeing who we got, seeing who we don't got, I figured we need somebody... Somebody to, to be on the first line with Ram Jackson. Because sure, we have a number one center, but Lindholm is not a number one number one. You know, he's a very, very good number two, but he's not, you know what I mean, an elite number one center that's going to go up against McDavid and Matthews and all of those guys, you know. So we wanted to get either a number one center or a top line right winger in free agency as far as our defense goes, I feel like we're doing okay. We are actually, we have a really good defense core. We have some goaltending, but I do want a starter because we are going to trade Marc Andre Fleury in a little bit. He's going to be like an 80 by the time the season's over. We do not want that. So we're going to do that. We're going to see if we can get a number one, either center or right wing, and then a number one goaltender. Now, unfortunately for me, there were no top line centers because, well, to be honest, teams kind of resign those. You know, they don't want to get rid of them. So I kind of had to go with right wingers. Why not? Let's give him a sniper as a right winger because Ram Jackson is a power forward. Our center is a playmaker. So let's try to find him a sniper. Kapanen, unfortunately, is not a sniper. So we're going to, unfortunately, and I say that this way because that is a big ass contract, we're going to have to sign a Vladimir Tarasenko to the hockey team and I don't mind it I don't mind it that much I'm just praying to God that with the coach that we're gonna have he's gonna fit in well with the strategies because that is a whole lot of money right here for Vladimir Tarasenko remember Sean Ram Jackson is gonna need his contract extension after this upcoming season so that's a little bit scary when you start eating into the cap but we're gonna make some moves as we need to make moves we need to go for it this year because 
would practically have Ram Jackson for free. He's a 90 overall plus player. And he's being paid under a million dollars. We have to go for it. That was my mentality for this season. So that's what we're going to do now. We offered Tarasenko that contract. And I'm looking, I quite honestly, I'm looking for a goaltender. And I don't like any of these names. They're either too old, they want too long of a contract, or their overall rating is just simply not high enough. So I was like, man, do not like any of this. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to settle on Frederick Anderson. We're going to sign him to somewhat of a big deal but you know what we have Sogard for a million dollars so I mean it's fine it's a one-year contract also for Anderson so we can repeat the the goalie search next season that's just kind of we're gonna rotate goalies we're not gonna get attached to anybody unless Sogard develops into a starter for a million dollars all right Goulet decides he wants to go to another team so I said okay you know what that's fair he said he appreciated the offer and everything so I go back into coaches I said let's find the second the second best coach we could find and then i find that this fat snake is still on the market i'm like you told me we're going to another team i don't like I, I don't appreciate this but you're still the best coach for the job so i mean we're gonna we're gonna try to hire you the bruins and habs are also in on this goaltender mind you so we have some heavy hitters so i had to up the salary a little bit to see if we could get him to sign with the flames i mean we have a franchise player we have a franchise player. We just signed Tarasenko. I'm I'm thinking it's going to be great. And no, he went to the Montreal Canadiens to coach old and $10 million carry price. So that sucked. That sucked. Now we need to fall back on our second option as a coach. And this is what's going to change the course of the Calgary Flames rebuild here a little bit. Because the best coach that we could find is, I think it is this McFarlane gentleman. Yes, and you can see 46% with the team the team chemistry so that's not really high enough we would like something better than that so we're gonna have to make some roster changes as we get McFarlane who is pretty good with both Hannafin and our boy Ram Jack saying he is a physical coach so we're gonna have to change the course like I said a little bit of the Calgary Flames we're gonna need to become a slightly heavier team kind of somewhat like the Flames are doing in real life to be honest with hiring Sutter we're gonna hire this coach and we're gonna go go see if we can do something good and luckily for us he's going to accept because I did not want to go into the like the lower tier head coaches and get like a C plus head coach I did not want that or a B minus head coach I didn't want that Tarasenko comes to daddy he's gonna play for the Flames so does Frederick Anderson so that is huge that is our two big fish and now here come the big moves because obviously now we have three million dollars of cap space but we need to start to reshape the roster, so we're going to need to make some cap space. We're going to send Flower, basically, for cap space. Boom. The stars are here. I mean, we got a we got an okay player out of it. You know, we got Radish. Radish is going to be a good player, and he's not being paid that much money. So this opens up a little bit more cap space for your boy. I'm not going to use all of the cap space, but what that's going to allow me to do is sign Ryan Getzlaff and have a little bit of wiggle room for mid-season trades you know you don't want to be capped out at the start of the season because then that makes trading players very very difficult so that's what i wanted to try to avoid we signed ryan gets if we're going to be a physical team with a physical coach i feel like that's that's a good player even though he's old he's going to be on the bottom six he's not going to be a top six forward for us there you go mcfarland signs huge news for the calgary flames new direction and i mean it's fine ram jackson's a power forward right our our superstar is a power forward so we it, building a physical team not a bad thing at all dylan dupe is on an expiring deal he's a two-way forward and and chuck is also a power forward but realistically he's a first liner look you look our chemistry is not the greatest so we are about to make some major major changes here in calgary because i feel like some assets are being wasted including mike hoffman who's just rotten there on a third line I do not like this. So looking at our trades, we're going to send some heavy, heavy hitters to the Chicago Blackhawks. But we do get back Patrick Kane for the first line. That was a big trade. That was a little bit of an overpayment. I understand this and I know this. I'm not going to act like the value was fair. I overpaid a little bit for Patrick Kane. But Kaner fits a little bit better than Tarasenko did on the first line. He is cheaper than Tarasenko. And we were going to have to sign Dylan Dubé, or, yeah, and we were probably going to use Dubé, or lose Dubé 
in the offseason, honestly. So Radish moves up to the top six. We still have Kachuk, who is a first-line player playing on the second line, and we have Hoffman. So let's not have those. Let's make some huge trades, partly to get a big-time defenseman to help out our boy Hannafin. So let's go. We're going to get Shea Weber from the Montreal Canadiens. That's going to be a little bit of a problem later. But for now, though, that bolsters up our defense. And if we do a little bit of finagling with the lines it's starting to look pretty damn good i mean kaner also always produces a ton of points even when he gets older and now we have evander kane on the second line i feel like he fits better there than our boy kachuk did so now we're gonna trade kachuk it's it's up there man it's up there we are trading a whole lot of people for a whole lot of players but we got evander kane we got Shea Weber. You can see how we are rebuilding this roster, reconstructing this roster as a really heavy team. And I think it's going to work well for us. Remember, we don't have to win the President's Trophy with this team because we're a physical team, which means when we get to the playoffs, it's going to be more successful. It's a style that is built for the playoffs. We also got to Foley in that deal, which I really like. Really, really like, man. I'm starting to mess with the lines a little bit but not quite we're gonna go back to tampa bay we're gonna send some good players back but we're also going to get tyler johnson and a playmaker and a sniper for the third line that's going to give us plus chemistry everywhere now that's what i wanted our defense pairs are a little bit of a lost cause honestly we're gonna have to work that out through time but as of now there's really not much that we can do with those defense pairings as far as chemistry goes. We can try to get Siegenthaler in there, and it works. It kind of fixes the negative chemistry, but there's nothing I can do to have positive chemistry on pairs two and three. So Sorensen, Dehan, and Yanmark are going to be our scratches. Now, they are some good trade pieces. They are also all expiring. I wanted to make sure the players that I was going to acquire, a lot of them were expiring because we don't know how much Rammer wants and we want that cap flexibility when he does get that big deal. So we're going to add some of our scratches to the trading block and we're going to see what happens. We also have a, a few decent pieces, see if we can bite something, see if we can attract something rather big. And here comes the regular season. The Calgary Flames are doing well, actually. We're, we're a little bit over 500. Not We're not blowing the league out of the water, but remember what I said. With a physical team, you don't need to win the President's Trophy. You just need to make the playoffs, have home ice advantage for maybe one or two rounds, and you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine because your team is built for the playoffs. That's what we wanted to do with the Calgary Flames. Kaner is leading the team in scoring, and it's time to start working on Mr. Ram Jackson's extension. 94 overall already. That is a whole, whole, whole lot of a player right there. He's a power forward. He's, he's looking like he's scoring a bunch of goals for us. He's just really good. We have to give him practically what he wants. He doesn't want to work on an extension, which I understand, because if he hits 50 goals, that's going to drive his price up even more. I want to sign him long-term. If he's going to command that kind of salary, we're going to sign him long-term for an extra you know million dollars here or there, and it's going to help us out in years 5, 6, and 7. We're going to sign him to a 7-year deal at $13 million per. That sounds like a whole lot of money, but when you think about it, it's less than a million more than Connor. And realistically, we're a couple years into the future, so the cap is higher than it was when Connor signed. So we're not too, too mad about that. It is a lot of money, but I feel like I can make it work. We're going to have to wait and see how that shapes out in the offseason. But Rammer, despite not wanting an extension, we offered him 13 mil a year for seven years. And he said, fuck yeah, when I'm coming back, I'm going to be a flame for the next seven years. So we bought a year of unrestricted free agency with that one. So we did like it. A couple of trade offers coming our way. There was some that were actually a little, hmm, a little enticing. I was looking at it. You're about to see here. The Predators are going to come to me with some, some pretty decent offers that I almost accepted here. But as I was trying, or as I was starting to get some good trade offers, I said, let's just hold off. Let's just hold off. We can always revisit them closer to the trade deadline or at the trade deadline and see what happens. Let's just see what we can get. I mean, while my roster is just it's just motoring. Man, we are over 500. We are, we are playing well. We are going towards the playoffs with a little bit of steam. We're getting closer to the trade deadline, and the Nashville Predators are going to come back with some more Ryan Ellis trades. And I was like, man, if this if this guy would actually help our defense spares, that would be sick. So I'm going to wait out and see what we can get 
And like I said, we can always revisit this, but I said, let's just wait. And patience was rewarded. As the Pittsburgh Penguins come knocking close to the trade deadline, they are offering us Evgeny Malkin and Braden Coburn for nobody off the roster. What they want is a good prospect. This man is a top six forward potential, but honestly, he's a little bit old, so he might not be like an 85-86. He might top out at 83-84, and we're getting Geno back. Sure, he's expiring, he's old, we're probably not going to be able to bring him back, but like I said, this is the year to go for it while we have Ram Jackson on his ELC, his final year of ELC. Coburn's also expiring. Give me that. All day, year day, Pittsburgh Penguins trade me. Evgeny Malkin right before the trade deadline. I was thinking about making some deadline moves for once, and we, then we got that. I mean, there's no there's no move. That was the trade deadline move. We got Evgeny Malkin for the playoff run. So a little bit of finagling around with the lines gives us, once again, boom, one chemistry on every forward line. Tyler Johnson's versatility is coming into play as he can now move to center. We have a one, two, three punch at center of really, really good proportions. Black Backlin is going to move to center because I feel like he can play that better than Malkin at his age. So Malkin's going to be a winger for us. It's not ideal, but it is what it is, man. We are absolutely stacked. This is a little bit worrying right here. We can see that Shea Weber is declining uh, severely. He was 88, I think, when I got him, and now he's an 84. Not good enough, but we're going to have to wait and see what we can do. Let's just, I tried Braden Coburn, see if he could give us some extra uh, chemistry. It didn't. So, you know what? Siegenthaler, after looking at his player card, he was he was doing really well for us, you know, considering he's a third pair guy. So, we're going to keep Siegenthaler, and unfortunately, Coburn is just going to have to be a casualty of this. He's not going to, he's not going to get to play for us, but you know what? If if we win the thing, he might, he might get a ring, you know? If we win the thing, he gets a ring. That rhymes. I like how that rhymes. End of the season. Calgary Flames, 49 wins on the season. That is more than last year's team. That's huge. We are making progress, and we added Evgeny Malkin to the team to bolster our lineup. Now, look at this. We have three guys in the 90s for points. That first line was humming the entirety of the season. I am loving this. Not mad at it at all. Obviously, we're going to check Gino for his Calgary Flames stats. He was posting up more points per game on the Flames than he was on the Penguins. I'm guessing the Penguins are on the decline at this point. Hannafin in there. Kaner in there. Both both Canes are doing exactly what we wanted out of them. I don't think we got a bad season from anybody, to be honest. I feel like we were doing really well. And our goaltenders, we would like to see more than a 905 out of Frederick Anderson. But, I mean, I guess it is what it is. We're going to see if we can bump that up a little bit in the playoffs, which we know Frederick Anderson doesn't really do that. I went ahead and I looked into extending Evgeny Malkin for one season, but then I saw that Hannafin, Hannafin was going to command a serious amount of money, so we're not going to offer Gino any sort of contract because we're probably going to lose Hannafin if we do, to be honest. So that's that's kind of the a little bit of gymnastics that we have to do with the cap at this point but now comes the playoff run first round against the anaheim ducks and we are going to exercise the demons with a foot up they ass as we sweep them sweep of the first round that is massive i am loving it and here comes the second round we have some rest we are coming in there with some momentum rest and a little bit of rust let's be honest but the second round is against probably nathan mckinnon still and a colorado avalanche i'm expecting a little bit more of a fight for us and a little bit more of a fight we got it's starting off decent but you can see that the games are close and you can see that you know we're in there we're fighting for it here we go with game six can we finally put them away no we do not it is going to game seven are we going to do all of that just just to have a second round exit that would be absolutely awful after two periods of play we have the lead in game seven of round two that is huge but they're going to make it close they're gonna tie it i am super super stressed out by now but because i'm like man i just went all in for this season boom huge goal we got the lead but they tie it right back up and late in the third period the flames need a hero and it comes in the hands of evander kane who scores a late game seven winning goal let's freaking go he sends us to round three which ironically 
is going to be against the San Jose Sharks. Because I say ironically, because though we didn't get him from the Sharks, that is his former team. You know, he was a part of the San Jose Sharks for a while. This is round three. This is where we always lose. And I want to win. And this time, this time it's going to be difficult again, man. The Sharks are the real deal at this point in the sim. We win the first two home games. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. If we can split the road games, we're going to have a 3-1 advantage. We can. SAP Center, the Shark Tank, is huge. And they win both games. It's game five. It is big time. 80-plus percent of the teams that win game five when it's even go on to win the series. So let's make a couple of line changes just to see if we can mix things up a little bit after two consecutive losses i could see which lines were working which lines weren't working so we just went ahead and we looked at what we can do for chemistry sake and we decided to put gino on the first line kaner on the second line i know kaner had a really good season for us but it's fine it's fine hopefully that's gonna help gino a little bit and we'll see how it goes we are also going to stack the living hell out of this power play this first power play unit is about to be one of the most disgusting probably the most disgusting power play units i've ever seen in my life honestly if you if you know if you understand that rammer is damn near a 50 goal score that is a nasty power play unit and we absolutely love it unfortunately for us weber is now an 82 so he is declining hard and we still have him on the books for another two years, so we're we're gonna gonna see what we can do with that at the the draft or you know during the resign phase. We need to try to get Weber the hell off this hockey team because cap troubles are a coming. We do have flexibility this off season, but let's not push our luck here. Weber is not gonna be an NHL player for much longer. But here we go with game five. Massive game in flames history, and we are going to win it. We take home huge jobs and we finish them off at the shark tank so that means we finally make the stanley cup finals we're taking on the columbus blue jackets in the fourth round i feel like we beat heavy hitters in the sharks man so i'm feeling confident in here but it ain't gonna be a cakewalk man columbus is gonna get some w's back there's gonna be a lot of close games i don't like this we're gonna slow sim game five because it is super important once again look at us three nothing start that is massive oh but they come back and evander kane is the only difference between the teams so far four to three after two periods of play we need this win please please so we can get to within one win of the stanley cup evander comes in clutch again for us five three flames they're gonna have a power play we're gonna kill it off because our pk is huge and we're a physical team now five to three is it gonna be Ooh, i saw the goal i got a little scared but it was six three in game five huge huge game for the flames three points for evander kane he was coming up clutch man in this playoff series this is what i was talking about you don't need to win the president's trophy with these type of players you just need to get to the playoffs and let them fight it out let them find that playoff strength that playoff gear that a few players have and this is the type of team that we have so here we go with game six with an opportunity to win the stanley cup it's on the road which is not ideal but still we have a 3-1 lead beginning the third period. Two early power plays for the Flames that we don't convert. That could come back to bite us, and it will. They score immediately after that second power play. It's 3-2. We make it 4-2. Just get a little bit of space between us, and unfortunately for us, they will not die. They score another one, but it's still 4-3. And right as I'm about to go in to watch the game, Patrick Lyonne scores right as I press the options button to come in here and see if we can watch the celebration so that sucked now it's a four to four tie late in the third period a minute left in the third period as a matter of fact and we need some huge plays here from the flames but i'm looking at it and these guys seem calm these guys seem composed i'm like oh hell yeah i like this look at this they're, they're taking their time they're making correct plays we're not turning pucks over in our defensive end, which is a big pet peeve of mine. So I like it. I really like how this team is playing in gameplay. And we finally get a decent breakout going here with some space. Gino creates space for himself, then for Rammer. And we score 8.9 seconds left. That is, a, that is a pretty ironic number to score the game-winning goal at. But John Ramjagsing, 
our captain is going to get a sick feed from our trade deadline acquisitions. Gino Malkin, look at this, just a sauce right on the tape. Gino's for our boy. Let's freaking go. Like I said, 8.9 seconds. That's a really ironic time to score your game-winning goal if you're the Calgary Flames. And all we got to do is close it out. We do. Nine seconds of defense later, the Flames are your Stanley Cup champions. Finally. Finally. I know I've made some sacrifices. I know I've traded a prospect. I've fired a couple of picks into the sun. But I really wanted to go for it in Ram Jackson's final year of ELC. I mean, he's being paid under a million. I had to go for it, and luckily for us, we came in clutch. But you know what? Those trade deadline, or just those trades in general, really helped us out, man. It's not just Rammer. Evander Kane takes home the Consmy Trophy. He just kept scoring clutch goals for us, so we're going to take it, man. That's a trade acquisition that I am very proud of. Weber is going to be a bit of a problem, you know, in the future, but it's fine. It's fine. We got a Stanley Cup out of it. And we got a seven-year contract for this man right here, John Ram Jagsing, our franchise left winger, practically Ovechkin. Like, he's practically a better, not a better, like a more physical, maybe less scoring Ovechkin. And that's huge, man. That is absolutely huge. We are going to pass it to Tyler Johnson. He gets the first handoff of the Stanley Cup. Good veteran player who's still kicking it on the bottom six, still doing what he do. And then we're going to give it to Segan Thaler. He was literally just a throw-in to make salaries work, and he ended up being a really solid rock for us on the third pair. So Siegenthaler is going to be the one to hold the Stanley Cup for about nine minutes. But we do it. We freaking did it, man. Stanley Cup, Calgary Flames. I absolutely love it. Our goaltender, obviously, is our boy Freddie Anderson from the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs couldn't get him a cup, but goddammit, the Flames could. There you go, Freddie good stuff and shirt sure, sometimes you know he allowed a lot of goals but that's what teams do man that's what teams do we pick each other up and we win the stanley cup there's some work to do in the off season but for now we're gonna celebrate together man let's freaking go champions